Greetings, mother factors. My name is Sam, and today I have a really bad throat. So if my voice goes all weird in this, I'm sorry, but I can't help it. Today, I'm going to be teaching you all about the confusing, highly technical, but ultimately very rewarding world of Bitcoin. The world of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies is a fickle business, and even the slightest mistake can cost you dearly. So heed our words carefully, so you don't end up losing literally millions like a liability. But which of Mark Zuckerberg's many enemies have heavily invested in Bitcoin? How did Bitcoin pretty much ruin a Welshman's life? And why hasn't my cryptocurrency Sandbox taken off like Bitcoin has? It's a conspiracy, I tell ya. Well, my profound paranoia aside, two out of three of those questions are gonna be answered. So strap yourself in, get comfy, and prepare your penniless peasant selves for 101 facts all about Bitcoin. Number one. So, the million cryptocurrency units question. What exactly is cryptocurrency? Essentially, a cryptocurrency is a form of virtual currency that uses cryptography, i.e. techniques for making information anonymous to secure digital transactions. Okay, cool, let's gingerly move on. Number two. The first and most popular of such currencies is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is used to make secure payments of any value without fees that would normally be imposed by banks, for instance. Bitcoin utilizes something called the blockchain, which is a decentralized virtual public ledger that keeps track of all transaction made using the currency. Are you still with me so far? Because it's only number two and we've got a long way to go. Number three. The concept of cryptocurrencies was first discussed in the 1990s by a loosely affiliated and rather ostentatiously named group known as Cypherpunks, which sounds like the name of a gang in an 80s sci-fi movie. We're the Cypherpunks, yeah. Cypherpunks advocated widespread usage of strong cryptographic technologies as a foundation for social or political change. The principal motivation was to create a currency that was democratic, secure, and not dependent on centralized institutions like banks. These guys really don't like banks, by the way. Number four. The creator of Bitcoin is Satoshi Nakamoto, although it actually isn't because Satoshi Nakamoto is a pseudonym that the creator or creators of Bitcoin use to conceal their identity. The secretive Nakamoto invented Bitcoin in 2008, which was then made available online in 2008, or if you don't speak Black Eyed Peas, 2009. Number five. There have been many attempts to identify the clever so-and-so or so-and-sos behind Nakamoto, all of which have failed to produce any conclusive proof or evidence. Nakamoto is claimed to be a man, sexist, could be a woman, who was born on the 5th of April 1975 and lives in Japan. But even this is disputed. There continues to be a great deal of speculation about Nakamoto's secret identity, with many believing that Nakamoto is actually American or European. He's like the Batman of the internet, except he protects money, and only a certain kind of money. Now he's not like Batman at all, is he really? Number six. In 2015, Wired and Gizmodo published separate stories claiming that the person behind Nakamoto is a 45-year-old Australian man named Craig Stephen Wright, who Wired described as a climate change denier, a serial entrepreneur, and an eccentric. Ooh, get you, Craig Stephen Wright. Number seven. In total, 16 different men have claimed that they are, in fact, the real Nakamoto. Either several people are lying, everyone is lying, or it's some kind of Spartacus-style smokescreen used to hide Nakamoto's true identity even deeper under a meticulously orchestrated smoke and mirrors campaign. Damn you, Nakamoto! Number 8. There are those who believe the secret to Nakamoto's identity or personality may be hidden in the name itself. Some people have suggested that the name is a thinly veiled nod to a number of Japanese companies, as the name can be broken into four sections which form the beginning of Samsung, Toshiba, Nakamichi and Motorola, suggesting that Bitcoin is not the creation of a self-starting Japanese nerd, but a shady consortium of corporations. Number 9. Others suggest a slightly more sinister possibility, owing to the fact that the name Satoshi means quick-witted or wise, and therefore intelligence. And Nakamoto translates to central origin. As family names are put before four names in Japanese, this would mean that the name Satoshi Nakamoto roughly means central intelligence. Get it? Central Intelligence, CIA, Illuminati confirmed, X-Files music. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Of course, all these conspiracies would seem to suggest that if shady governments or an alliance of menacing companies are controlling Bitcoin, they're intentionally leaving clues for people to find. <laughs> sure, Jan. Number 10. Others have even noticed the phrase Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto is in fact an anagram of cash miner too basic to not a ratio. Talk about cryptic currencies, am I right? <laughs> I'll be here all week. Number 11. Nakamoto is thought to own approximately 1 million bitcoins, which, as of November 2017, has an estimated value of roughly 7 billion US dollars. That's a lot of chicken nuggets. 
Number 12. Predictably, a lot of people are very interested in a form of money not controlled by a centralized government or bank. As such, Bitcoin has attracted all manner of nefarious ne'er-do-wells looking to carry out private anonymous transactions for illegal purchases like drug deals, for example. Naughty, naughty. Number 13. For example, Charlie Shrem, the CEO of a company named BitInstant, was jailed after working directly with a drug dealer to launder roughly $1 million worth of Bitcoin for users of the Silk Road. What is the Silk Road? Well, funny you should ask. Number 14. The Silk Road was an international multi-million dollar website which utilized the decentralized anonymous nature of Bitcoin to facilitate all manner of illegal stuff. Primarily drug trading, but also money laundering and even attempts to procure assassinations. The site was eventually shut down by the FBI and later attempts to revive the site failed due to a lack of funds. The controversy that the site created unfortunately gave Bitcoin a bad reputation, which damaged its value for years. But like Joan Jett, I don't think they give a damn about their bad reputation anymore. Number 15. Silk Road was supposedly founded by Ross Ulbricht, who is also known by the pseudonym Dread Pirate Roberts, a reference to the novel The Princess Bride and its film adaptation. Among other activities, according to Wired.com, Ulbricht allegedly paid $80,000 to have a former employee murdered. Unfortunately for him, though, the hitman he met with was actually an undercover DEA agent. The FBI would later seize 20% of Dread Pirate Roberts' Bitcoin, and as such now possesses 1.5% of all the world's Bitcoin stash. Number 16. Later on, the US government auctioned off 44,341 bitcoins that they confiscated from Silk Road drug dealers, at a fraction of the price that they would usually fetch. The current value for that amount of bitcoin is around $313 million. Or, if you're British like me, £240. I mean, <laughs> £240 million. Pounds. Number 17. While in operation, the Silk Road supposedly constituted up to 5% of the world's bitcoin economy, so yeah, a lot of crooked characters really like bitcoin. Then again, they also like other money, so, you know. Number 18. In August of 2012, a Bitcoin Ponzi scheme by the name of the Bitcoin Savings and Trust was shut down and its founder, Trendon Shavers, was given a $40 million fine and 18 months in prison. Shavers defrauded roughly 700,000 Bitcoin from its investors, which he was found to have spent on rent, cars, shopping, gambling, and fancy dinners. What a knob. Number 19. The controversial super-secret info-leaking organization known as WikiLeaks turned to Bitcoin to continue its activities after major money transfers companies began to refuse to deal with it. Number 20. However, the unique nature of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin does actually have philanthropic applications too. Many people around the world, including immigrants or those in developing nations, often struggle to get bank accounts, which is often a major obstacle for those trying to fight poverty. Digital currencies can solve this problem, as it grants anyone with a mobile phone the ability to store their money. Number 21. As the cryptocurrencies grow more and more popular, many people believe that they will inevitably become the most common way for the average person to manage their money. As such, most major banks have begun to hire Bitcoin specialists to advise them on how to integrate cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin into already existing systems. Number 22. Ooh. Despite the fact that users of Bitcoin can remain relatively anonymous, the way it records transactions and amounts is completely transparent. Everything is visible on the blockchain, and it's this level of openness and transparency that ensures security and trust within the Bitcoin community. Number 23. Bitcoin is notoriously difficult to fake or replicate due to its detailed history. Every participant in the Bitcoin network has a copy of the same central ledger, which keeps a record of every transaction ever made going back to the creation of the currency itself. Basically, it's bloody massive. As you can imagine, that makes trying to cheat people more than a little tricky, because there's a lot of people, and it's a big ledger. Number 24. Unlike other forms of currency, there's actually a limit to the amount of bitcoins that can be created. The maximum number of bitcoins that can ever exist is 21 million. This is a quality that a lot of people like about bitcoin, as it creates a fixed supply, similar to that of gold. Number 25. Based on the mathematical processes behind the mining of bitcoins, more on that later, the last bitcoins will be mined in the far-off distant future of 2140. If you're watching this in 2140, possibly in a museum somewhere, or in the 22nd century version of YouTube, hey! Number 26. Another, less desirable attribute of bitcoin is that it's extremely volatile, like a volcano. The value of Bitcoin has been known to plummet by up to 80% in the span of just a few days, which is really quite bad. Number 27. So, how were Bitcoins actually, you know, made? 
Well, they're created through a process called mining. You know, like Minecraft or Down the Mine or Mining Budgie. No, not that one. This involves using a computer program to solve mathematical problems, which are then rewarded with Bitcoin. This provides a method of issuing the currency and an incentive for more people to do it, which keeps Bitcoin going. Apparently, roughly 3,600 new Bitcoins are mined every day. Number 28. One notable quality of Bitcoin is that, unlike the other popular platforms for managing money online, such as PayPal, transactions cannot be reversed. Once money has been sent, it's literally impossible to get it back, outside of begging the recipient to return it. It's like marriage proposals in that way, you can't, you can't, you know, beg to retract them. So, balls in your cart, Jennifer Lawrence. Number 29. Predictably, this particular attribute of Bitcoin has caused problems. No way, really? In 2016, one Bitcoin user made a huge mistake. Instead of sending the equivalent of $5, as they intended, they accidentally sent the equivalent of $137,000. Number 30. As of July 2017, there are around 16.5 million Bitcoins currently in circulation. If you have one, two, or even 3,000 of them, well done, you'll probably have a lot of money very soon. So, just remember who your friends are on YouTube. This guy, me. Number 31. Now that Bitcoin has entered the public consciousness, the average person is becoming more and more knowledgeable about it and cryptocurrencies in general. Especially after you watch this video too. Over 78% of Americans have heard of Bitcoin, but only 14% of them have ever used it. That being said, 40% of Americans have said they are open to the idea of using Bitcoin in the future. So if you're still watching in 2140, you'll probably know whether or not that prediction came true. Also, sorry that everything's underwater now. Number 32. However, though more and more people are becoming aware of Bitcoin, there still appears to be some degree of uncertainty about what it actually is. Which is probably why you're watching this video. Of the Americans who have heard of Bitcoin, roughly 11% believe that owning it is actually illegal in the United States, while another 48% on top of that aren't sure of Bitcoin's legality. That means that only 41% of the Americans that know about Bitcoin actually know that it's not illegal. Number 33. The very first Bitcoin transaction happened on the 12th of January 2009 between the mysterious Nakamoto and computer programmer Hal Finney. Finney downloaded the Bitcoin software the day it was released and received 10 Bitcoins from Nakamoto himself. I must say that's extremely trusting of Finney because that could have been a virus or just like paper money. Number 34. But what exactly was the transaction for? The payment was 10,000 Bitcoins for a slice of pizza. Only three days after this transaction occurred, the same amount of Bitcoin would be worth $7 million which I assume can be used to buy a lot more than a single sliver of pizza. Well, I hope so. I mean, pizza's good, but seven million for a slice? Number 35. In fact, a year after Bitcoin was launched, it held a value of roughly four cents, or around two pence for my fellow Britishers. Right now, though, it's worth over $6,500. Hot damn, that's a big leap. Number 36. It's hard to actually comprehend this extreme rise in value that Bitcoin has experienced in such a short time. Between 2010 and 2017, the value of Bitcoin has multiplied 879,999 times. This means that if you invested only $100 in Bitcoin in 2010, you'd now be worth somewhere in the region of $72 million. Yep, but you're kicking yourself now, aren't you? Number 37. As a result, a single Bitcoin is now worth so much money that everyday amounts of money are roughly equivalent to only a fraction of one Bitcoin. The smallest fraction of a Bitcoin that can currently be sent is 0.0000001 of a Bitcoin, or rather, one hundredth of a millionth. This unit has affectionately been nicknamed as a Satoshi, after its mysterious founder. Number 38. Rough estimates show that as of January 2017, there are now over 10 million people who possess some amount of Bitcoin, a large amount of whom aren't really even using them. Why? You've heard how much they're worth? Get on it, party people! Number 39. Yep, that's right, only a little over a third of Bitcoins are currently being used to buy things and enjoy life with. The rest are completely inactive and haven't been touched since they were first bought. Go buy something, you guys. Food, clothes, personal lubricants, whatever takes your fancy. Number 40. That being said, the vast, vast majority, around 90% in fact, of all Bitcoin addresses have less than 0.1 Bitcoin which is currently worth around £530, or $700. Many addresses, in fact, have substantially less than that. Number 41. As in real life, the rich dominate the poor on Bitcoin, which is why we should seize the means of production, but hey, that's just me. The top 1,000 Bitcoin addresses control 34% of all of it that's in circulation. The meaning of life. 
The largest transaction ever made on the Bitcoin network was for 194,993 Bitcoins, which was the equivalent to approximately $147 million at the time. The transaction was aptly tagged by the person receiving the amount with four short words. <laughs> load of money. Number 43. Bitcoin has become so prominent around the world that in 2015, Satoshi Nakamoto was nominated for a Nobel Prize in Economics. He or they didn't win, presumably because Bitcoin was created by the CIA to steal millions from forgetful Welshmen. Wake up, sheeple! Oh wait, whoops, the Welshman isn't in this bit yet, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself, I love Welshmen. Number 44. When a TV host at Bloomberg by the name of Matt Miller attempted to educate viewers on the new and exciting form of currency called Bitcoin, he inadvertently showed exactly how not to keep your Bitcoin safe. After he flashed a QR code on a Bitcoin gift voucher worth $20, a Reddit user by the fabulous name Milky Way Master immediately scanned the code and nicked the $20. Milky Way Master offered to pay it back, but Miller insisted they keep it, having provided everybody with an important lesson on digital security. Number 45. Just like storing and managing your money in online bank accounts, Bitcoins are saved in high secure digital Bitcoin wallets. You can also put this information into so-called cold storage by simply saving the data offline, either on a computer or an external hard drive or memory stick, which is referred to as a hard wallet. This technique is practiced by those who are worried about hackers stealing their well-earned Bitcoins. Number 46. Unfortunately, if you lose this data, for example by dropping the USB drive into a kettle, your Bitcoins are lost forever and it's impossible to recover it. There are services which help people who have forgotten passwords but may have a vague recollection of what it might be. But if you really, really cannot remember any of your password at all, or have lost a so-called hard wallet, you're screwed. Number 47. Several people have discovered this the hard way, such as in the tragic case of Welshman James Howells. Howells mined approximately 7,500 bitcoins back in 2009 when they were worth practically nothing, which he kept on a hard drive and promptly forgot about. By the time he realised that their value had skyrocketed to over £4 million, he'd already thrown the hard drive away. Howells even went to a landfill to search for it, but predictably was unsuccessful. Oh, just thinking about that is giving me anxiety. Number 48. An Australian man by the name Campbell Simpson did the same thing. Simpson happens to be the editor of Gizmodo Australia, and so wrote a heartbreaking article explaining that he threw away an utterly generic 250GB portable hard drive containing 1,400 bitcoins, which were worth around $30 at the time. By the time he'd realised what he'd done, the bitcoins he'd thrown away were worth more than $4 million, and even more to this day. Number 49. Thankfully, not everybody is so careless with their Satoshis. In 2009, a Norwegian man by the name of Christopher Koch bought 5,000 bitcoins for $27, again just forgetting about them like Howells and Simpson. Koch, however, didn't throw anything away, and by the time he remembered he had them, his small bitcoin investment was worth millions. He traded in only a fifth of his stash, which he then used to buy an entire goddamn house in Oslo. Number 50. In 2011, a guy called Mike Caldwell began minting physical bitcoins known as Casicus bitcoins. These coins function much like the hard wallets we previously mentioned, with a digital key hidden behind a tamper-proof strip. Unfortunately for Caldwell though, the US federal government considered his activities to be an illegal form of money transmitting, and promptly made him stop. Number 51. In 2013, the teeny tiny island of Alderney in the British Channel Islands was the first jurisdiction in the world to announce it would mint physical Bitcoin coins, in a bid to transform itself into an international centre for legal Bitcoin operations. However, Alderney shelved its ambitious plans only a few months later. Number 52. Today, there is an impressive 1,587 Bitcoin ATMs in over 50 countries around the world. Basic Bitcoin ATMs only allow users to purchase Bitcoins, whereas more complex ones give you the option to both buy and sell the virtual money. Number 53. Though the majority of Bitcoin ATMs are located in the United States, the world's first was installed in the lovely Canadian city of Vancouver. Roughly 75% of all Bitcoin ATMs are located in North America. Number 54. Predictably, a lot of people are suspicious of cryptocurrencies and how they could be used. Thailand went as far as to actually ban Bitcoin in 2013, declaring it was not currency. In 2016, however, Bank of Thailand claimed that Bitcoin wasn't illegal, although warned against its use. Number 55. A number of other countries have outlawed Bitcoin. It's also illegal in Saudi Arabia, Bolivia, Kyrgyzstan, Ecuador and Bangladesh, mainly because of an aforementioned poor reputation for linking it to money laundering. Number 56. China banned its banks from trading Bitcoin in 2013, again due to fears it could be used to facilitate criminal activity. However, private parties in China can still use Bitcoin. Number 57. 
When its own currency was falling in value, Argentina saw a huge surge in the use of Bitcoin, as more and more people were obviously getting fed up with the high inflation and currency controls. Though Bitcoin is considered money in the South American nation, it's technically not legal currency. Sad. Number 58. Another country, Venezuela, is also turning to Bitcoin in the midst of an economic crisis. The country was once the richest in South America, but it's now the most indebted country in the world. As such, many Venezuelans have begun investing their money in Bitcoin, with some speculating that Venezuela may even make Bitcoin their official currency. Number 59. However, though cryptocurrency mining is officially legal in Venezuela, a large number of people have been arrested for doing it, often accused of money laundering, various cyber crimes, or even terrorism. It's speculated that Venezuelan leaders view Bitcoin as a threat to their already weak official currency, the Bolivar. As a result, Bitcoin mining is carried out in secret, giving Venezuela a reputation as one of the most dangerous places on Earth to mine cryptocurrency. Number 60. Switzerland appears to have a far more progressive attitude toward Bitcoin than any other nation. The town of Zug in central Switzerland, which claims the title of Crypto Valley, began allowing residents to pay for government services with Bitcoin in 2016. And not long afterwards, the mayor of the municipality of Chiasso in the south of the nation announced that it would allow taxes to be paid in Bitcoin. I've said Bitcoin too many times now, it doesn't mean anything. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Number 61. Kreuzberg, an area of Berlin known for its rebellious politically aware ethos, has established itself as a Bitcoin-friendly shopping destination. Shopkeepers report that cryptocurrency is not just used by nerds, and that there is no typical Bitcoin user by age or gender. Hmm, how cosmopolitan. Number 62. Other areas in Europe are emerging as Bitcoin hotspots, such as The Hague in the Netherlands and certain areas of Paris, which are becoming known as Bitcoin boulevards. Other places in countries like Spain and Ukraine are also jumping on the European Bitcoin bandwagon. Seriously, it's a new Beatlemania. Number 63. For our colonial viewers, you'll be pleased to know that Bitcoin shopping is available in the US. People travel from miles around to visit Lee Road in Cleveland, Ohio, which has billed itself as America's first Bitcoin boulevard. Some proprietors claim they've even had shoppers come from North Carolina, at least 400 miles away, just so they can use Bitcoin there. Nintendo 64. The micronation of Lieberland heavily uses Bitcoin. The unrecognized country's founder, a Czech libertarian political activist named Vít Jedlíka, said that Bitcoin was the base of Lieberland's economy, and they used Bitcoin to buy the nation's first boat. Good for them. Number 65. In 2017, a Lamborghini dealership happily declared that it had sold a car worth almost $120,000 to a guy called Peter Saddington, with Bitcoins he purchased way back in 2011. This means that the car cost him the equivalent of $115. Number 66. Former Spice Girl and possibly the world's most famous person from Yorkshire, Mel B, made history as the very first musician to accept Bitcoin as payment for her music. Other artists like SNOOP, DOGG, and Childish Gambino also accept Bitcoin payments. Number 67. In 2013, Richard Branson's space travel company Virgin Galactic also announced that they would be accepting Bitcoin. So if you've got the money and aren't terrified about the prospect of visiting space with a company that also sold cola in the 90s, you can do it in Bitcoin, baby. Number 68. In 2013, hundreds of companies participated in a Bitcoin Black Friday sale, which gave customers the chance to use Bitcoin to purchase all manner of products, ranging from organic beer to Christmas trees. Despite a decrease in merchant numbers, Bitcoin Black Friday has continued to grow in terms of traffic, as the event seeks to cater to niche markets favoured by the Bitcoin community. Number 69. Hard wallets. In 2013, a branch of the Subway Sandwich Shop in Russia became the first to accept Bitcoin as a form of payment, offering customers a 10% discount for using the popular cryptocurrency. A few days later, a branch in Pennsylvania was discovered to be Bitcoin friendly too. Number 70. So you can buy houses, cars, and food with Bitcoin. But what about something infinitely more valuable? Love. In 2013, OKCupid okay began accepting Bitcoin, making it possibly the first dating site to do so. The company CEO, Sam Yagen, said the decision to accept Bitcoin was motivated not by customer demand, but simply a desire to embrace a new technology that is not going away anytime soon. Number 71. In fact, a large number of big companies now accept payments in Bitcoin, including Dell, Amazon, PayPal, eBay, Expedia, and even Microsoft. Bill Gates himself is an enormous advocate of Bitcoin and claims that it's better than currency. Uh, hey genius, Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. <laughs> Bill Gates is so stupid. I mean, not that stupid, Clint. Anyway, let's move on. Number 72. But it's not just big tech companies who are embracing the Bitcoin revolution. Sears, Kmart, Home Depot, and Whole Foods all have branches that allow you to pay using Bitcoin. Number 73. 
With the introduction of Bitcoin payments to Japan's popular point of sale app, Airregi, as many as 300,000 stores in Japan will accept Bitcoin by the end of 2017. Bitcoin has been a legal form of payment in Japan since April the 1st, 2017. And no, it wasn't a big April Fool's Day joke. Because if it was, it's been lasting for a long time now. Number 74. Mega Upload 2.0, created by the infamous Kim.com, integrates Bitcoin directly and claimed that his creation is a nightmare for all those who want mass surveillance and censorship. Number 75. Of course, whenever people get their grubby little mitts on money, they love to gamble with it. As such, there's a number of websites that enable you to gamble Bitcoin legally, such as Mbit Casino, Prime Dice, and Bitcoin Poker. Number 76. But it's not just businesses who are getting in on the Bitcoin game. A man in New York once put his house up for sale for $799,000, or to those who are more digitally inclined, the equivalent in Bitcoin. Number 77. In 2016, a Bitcoin cloud mining provider by the name of Genesis Mining decided to do something pointless yet cool by sending Bitcoin to space. This was done by slapping a Bitcoin paper wallet to the back of a 3D printed Bitcoin model, which was then attached to a weather balloon. The company's ground team made a transaction to the wallet once the weather balloon reached a height of 20 kilometers, and then another when it ascended to the maximum altitude of 34 kilometers. The entire adventure was recorded on a GoPro, which shows the Bitcoin model rolling around in front of the curvature of planet Earth. Yeah, as I said, cool, but kind of pointless. Number 78. The computing power of the Bitcoin network is, according to experts, around 2,046,364 petaflops. The combined computing power of the 500 most powerful supercomputers pales in comparison at a pitiful, shameful, truly embarrassing, just 274 petaflops. Number 79. The amount of electricity running the Bitcoin network is enough to power 1.3 million homes. Number 80. Despite the tremendous progress that Bitcoin has made in a few short years, it still has a long way to go. In 2015, out of the 320 million Americans currently scurrying around atop their fair land, only 802 US citizens filed tax returns on Bitcoin income. Number 81. Bitcoin is also inspiring filmmakers to chronicle its meteoric rise and less meteoric trips and stumbles along the way. A documentary entitled Banking on Bitcoin took a very in-depth look at Bitcoin examining how it works and how its proponents plan to change the world. Number 82. Filmmakers Austin Craig and Becky Bingham decided to get slightly more hands-on in the cinematic approach to films about Bitcoin. They decided to make Life on Bitcoin, a documentary in which they depicted their attempts to exist entirely on Bitcoin for the 90 days after they returned home from their honeymoon. Number 83. The very first university to allow students to pay for their studies with the big B word was the University of Nicosia in Cyprus. Since then, a number of other universities have followed suit, such as King's College in New York City and the University of Cumbria in the United Kingdom. Number 84. Like any community that exists primarily online, the people who enjoy the culture of cryptocurrencies have come up with a number of idiosyncratic slang terms. One of the most popular is to the moon, which basically refers to the possibility of a cryptocurrency performing amazingly well and making everyone rich. Number 85. Another such slang term is HODL, which is both a misspelling of the word hold and an abbreviation of hold on for dear life. It refers to the practice of obtaining as many coins as possible and holding on to them, again in the hope that this will make them fantastically rich one day. Number 86. In 1999, The Economist Milton Friedman predicted the invention of cryptocurrencies an entire decade before Bitcoin was created. He described it as e-cash that would allow anonymous money transfers which would reduce the role of government. Friedman died in 2006 before he could see his incredible prediction come true. Number 87. But Bitcoin isn't the only player in the cryptocurrency game. There are actually several other cryptocurrencies which function slightly differently to Bitcoin for different purposes. Examples of other cryptocurrencies are Dash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Number 88. Despite what many people believe and what I just said, Ethereum is not a cryptocurrency, but a platform. The unit of exchange that drives Ethereum is Ether which can be more accurately described as cryptocurrency. Number 89. A lot of people believe that the name Ethereum comes from the world of Warcraft, but those people are wrong and should feel bad about themselves. One of Ethereum's co-founders, a guy by the name of Vigilik Buterin, impossibly the most relatable explanation for a fact ever, had apparently got stuck in a Wikipedia hole and was scrolling through a list of science fiction elements. Noticing Ethereum, he liked that it had the word Ether in it, and so decided to name his cryptocurrency after that element. Number 90. Litecoin was introduced as an alternative to and improvement on Bitcoin and uses different technology to mine. 
Created in October 2011 by former Google engineer Charles Lee, Litecoin can confirm transactions much faster than Bitcoin. So if you've got the need for cryptocurrency speed, Litecoins may be for you. Number 91. Additionally, although Bitcoin has a limit of 21 million mineable coins, Litecoin's limit is much higher. Four times higher to be exact, at a total of 84 million. As of today, there are roughly 53 million Litecoins, already exceeding the number of Bitcoins that can ever be created. Number 92. There's a number of other less serious cryptocurrencies that appear to have been developed entirely for the lulls. Dogecoin is a meme-inspired cryptocurrency that was literally started as a joke, but it appears to have gotten more than a little out of hand. There's a few mainstream applications for Dogecoin, but it's largely used as an internet tipping system, and is exactly what it was originally intended to be, a joke. Number 93. That hasn't stopped Dogecoin from doing incredible things though. In 2014, the Dogecoin community successfully raised almost 70 million Dogecoins, roughly equivalent to about $55,000 at the time. This was the sponsor NASCAR driver Josh Wise, who actually raced with a car covered in the Dogecoin logo. Number 94. Not only that, but the Dogecoin community have even managed to figure out how to get their cryptocurrency baby to the moon. Literally. Joe Frusetta, a cryptocurrency enthusiast from Portland, Oregon, started a crowdfunding campaign to get a physical representation of Dogecoin, in the form of a gold-plated coin, to head to the moon in 2019 with a rover designed by Astrobotic, a space robotics company. Number 95. There was even a cryptocurrency parody of Kanye West, the hilariously named Coinye, which featured West's name, face, and logo. Apparently, Mr. Fishstix himself didn't appreciate the joke, and his lawyers told the people behind Coinye to stop. In response, West's logo was removed, and his face was semi-replaced with a Kanye fish hybrid, referencing the famous South Park episode, which beautifully satirized West's narcissism. Eventually, West's legal team put the developers under enough pressure that the developers eventually caved, voicing the end of Coinye as a bona fide cryptocurrency. Coinye, we hardly knew ye. Number 96. And then there's InCoin, or Independence Coin, which combines old-school gold standards with uber-modern cryptocurrency. Each InCoin is backed by one one-hundredth of a gram of gold stored at Anthem Vault, a company that deals in precious metals. Number 97. A number of people have made themselves millionaires through Bitcoin, such as Roger Ver with $52 million, Dave Carlson with $35 million, and Jared Kenner with $30 million. Number 98. The Winklevoss twins, who were famously involved in a high-profile legal dispute with Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, heavily invested with Bitcoin, creating their own wallet called Gemini. In 2013, they claimed to possess 1% of all existing Bitcoins. Number 99. Another famous rich person, Mark Cuban, decided to get in on the Bitcoin game and created his own Bitcoin investment firm. Cuban is a venture capitalist who gained fame for appearing on the popular TV show Shark Tank and, disappointingly, isn't Cuban. Number 100. Of course, eventually, arty-farty types get their hands on everything, and Bitcoin is no exception. In 2014, two London-based Swiss artists created Random Darknet Shopper, which goes online with $100 worth of Bitcoin a week and makes a number of random purchases, which are then shipped to galleries for other arty-farty types to marvel at. Yeah, groundbreaking, huh? Number 101! Bitcoin's value continues to grow, with some people believing that Bitcoin could eventually be worth $25,000 or even more. Others are far more pessimistic and insist that the Bitcoin bubble is eventually destined to crash. But whatever happens, they all lived happily ever after. Maybe, unless they lose all their money. Who knows? Anyway, that was 101 Facts on Bitcoin. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. If you're investing in Bitcoin, let me know in the comments below. If you think I should invest in Bitcoin, let me know in the comments down below. And you need to tell me what to do next, guys, because I'll do what you like. I'm a dancing monkey. Dance for me now and watch these two videos on screen. They're really quite good and special and things. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.